In this lesson, we're going to add and subtract rational expressions that have different denominators. And this is going to be part one. So there will be about two or three parts to uh, this topic to give you um, some, some different kinds of examples. So um, the prerequisites for this lesson, for, for part one and part two, just make sure you go back and you review the lessons and topics that we've talked before. So we had some lessons about least common multiple and least common denominator. We talked about adding and subtracting uh, rational expressions with the same denominators. And we also talked about writing equivalent rational expressions. So all of this information will be important when we begin our discussion on adding and subtracting rational expressions with different denominators. So as a review, let's let's uh, go back to a long time ago when you had to add, let's say, these two um, rational numbers. So let's say we wanted to add um, 3 eighths plus 2 um, uh, fifths, let's say. All right, so so the, the in, in order to add fractions, remember, you have to have the same denominator. So in this case, your denominators are different. And to have the same denominator in this case, you have to find the least common denominator or the least common multiple of the denominators. And so if you look at this, it's fairly simple that the least common denominator here is, is uh, 40. So my LCD is 40. And so what we do next is we're going to write equivalent fractions using the denominator of 40 for both of these fractions. So basically you said he said, all right, I want to have 3 eighths. I want to write an equivalent fraction for 3 eighths that has a denominator of 40. And what you did was you asked yourself, 8 times what is 40? So it would be 8 times 5. But what you do to the um, denominator, you have to do to the numerator. And if you go back to a previous lesson that we talked about, remember the, the idea is that you want to keep 3 eighths equivalent. So whatever whatever you multiply numerator and the denominator by, those the, the numerator and denominator have to be the same to get that to be a 1 here, because 3 eighths times 1 is still 3 eighths. All right, so, so um, that was the idea in previous lessons that we talked about. And so whatever you, you get here will be this now. So 3 times 5 will be 15. And so what we found is that 3 eighths is equivalent to 15 over 40. So if you reduce this, you will get 3 eighths back. Because remember how we got this right here. We got this by multiplying 3 by 5 and, and uh, 8 by, by 5 as well. All right. And so, and so if you reduce, if you divide both, of, both numerator and denominator by 5, you'll get 3 eighths back. Okay, so, so what we found is that 3 eighths is equivalent to 15 40 eighths. Plus, and now I'm going to write I'm going to write an equivalent fraction for two fifths using the LCD of, of 40. So two fifths equals, and then 40. So in this case, we'll say five times eight is 40, and then two times eight is 40. So eight divided by eight is one, and so two times eight is 16. So this will become 16 fortieths. And then now you can add the two fractions because they have the same partitions. They have the same denominator. And so 15 40ths plus 16 40ths, so I have 15 1 40ths here and 16 1 40ths. So altogether, I have 15 plus 16, so that's where you just add the numerators. So you have 31 40ths, okay? And so that will be your answer. So, so that was a quick review. And you're going to use this idea with, with um, the uh, type of problems we're going to see next. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So the directions will say add or subtract. And remember, we're adding and subtracting rational expressions with different denominators. And so we will need to find the least common denominator and write equivalent fractions. So that's the process. Okay, so number one, we have um, 3x minus 5 divided by 12. And I am subtracting this rational expression 3x plus 2 divided by 8. All right, so, so notice that, that I cannot combine, I cannot combine these two into one rational expression. See, once, once I get, once I get the denominators to be the same, then I can write as one rational expression. 
Okay, right now I cannot. So just like we did here, I've got to go from here to here, and that's where I get the same denominator. So notice that those denominators are, are, are not the same. So the least common denominator of 12 and 8, and remember in lessons there, there are different ways of doing this. You could use a factor tree, do the prime factorization, or you could just do multiples of 12 until you find one in which, until you find the least one in which 8 will go into and 12 will go into it as well. So, so if you look at 12 and 8 though, but it's not that difficult because because notice if you do multiples of 12, 12 times 2 is 24 and 8 goes into 24. So that's going to be your least common denominator is 24. Always use the least. Don't use a common denominator. Use the least common denominator. It makes things a lot easier for you. So for example, someone may have used, and we said 24. Well, if I, if I uh, double 24, that's 48. Well, 8 goes into 48. And you can use 48, but then it makes things a little bit more difficult for you because you're ending up with, with larger numbers to deal with. And so it's always easiest to use the least. All right, so my least common denominator is 24. Now, the way I would approach this is this. So I would, I would kind of do the work, finding, the, the, finding this part here, the equivalent fractions. Remember, this, this part was, was equivalent fractions. That's, that's the part that dealt with this. So writing equivalent fractions. I would do that part on the side, and then and then just do, once I find the equivalent fractions, put that here. That's the way I would approach this in all these problems. So, so always do some of the work on the side. You still have to show it, but do it on the side. Okay, so in other words, what I'm saying is this. So I have 3x minus 5 divided by 12. And so, remember, I've got to multiply this by some, by some fraction, some rational expression that, that's equal to 1. And so in other words, the numerator and denominator will have to be the same to get a rational expression that has a denominator of 24. Okay, so 12 times what's 24? Well, 12 times 2 is 24. So what I do to the numerator, a denominator, I do to the numerator. And so therefore, this becomes the product of these now. So that becomes 2 times 3x minus 5. Don't do anything else. Put that here now. That's, that's the way I would do this. So now I'm going to put this here. So 2 times 3x minus 5 divided by 24. Okay? And then I'm going to subtract. Now always be careful with subtraction. Subtraction sometimes will get will get will cause students a little issue, especially when you're subtracting a rational expression where the numerator is, is not a monomial. So if it's a polynomial that's not a monomial, some students do get a little hiccup here. All right, so same thing here. So let's, let's, let's take this, this rational expression. So 3x plus 2 divided by 8. So I've got to multiply this by some rational expression that's equal to 1 to get a um, least common denominator, to get an equivalent fraction that's equal to, with a denominator of 24. So 8 times 3, right? So that's times 3, and so I'm going to say 3 times, now I'm going to multiply the numerators, so 3 times uh, 3x plus 2. So that's going to go here. So 3 times 3x plus 2 divided by 24. And you can always check yourself. So if you were to, to reduce this, notice that 3 into 3 is 1, 3 into 24 is 8, and you get this back. All right, so always check. 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 24 is 12, and you get this back. All right, now... Now what I'm going to do next, what I would do next is, is, is this. And, and, and there are several approaches you can take. So what some students can do, and it's, it's up to, to you, um, you can go ahead and distribute next. Okay? And so, so if you want to do that, you can. Or you can write as one rational expression now. So let's go ahead and just distribute at this point, since that, that's the inclination for, for many students. So we're going to distribute the numerator. So the next step is to, is to um, at this point, get rid of the parentheses. So I get, I get um, 6x minus 5 divided by 24, okay, minus, and then in, he, on the, in this numerator, I get 9x plus 6. So if you distribute, you get 9x plus 6 divided by 24. Now I'm going to write this as one rational expression. So now, in other words, in other words, I'm going to write this as one rational expression, all divided by 24. So it's going to be this numerator, subtract this numerator. All right. So in other words, it's going to be 
6x minus 5, subtract. Now, you got to be careful. Remember, I told you a while ago, some students have a little issue with when there's subtraction, and this is not a monomial, because what's happening is that you are subtracting all of these terms. So, so what you need to do now is realize I'm subtracting 9x, and I'm also subtracting 6, right? So if I subtract 9x, then this is negative 9x. If I subtract 6, then this is negative 6. So what I would do at this point is just whenever, whenever you have a subtract, whenever you're subtracting a polynomial that's more than one term, then put that in parentheses. And then that may help some of you. And so then this, now get rid of the parentheses now. So I get 6x minus 5 minus, so we're going to distribute the negative through here, minus 9x minus 6 divided by 24. And so then we get, we get, now you combine like terms. So we get 6x minus 9x is a negative 3x. A negative 5 and a negative 6 is a negative 11 divided by 24. And notice that there's, there's really, um, there's no common factor here. So, so the GCF, the GCF in the numerator is 1. And so there's no need to do anything further. There's your answer. Now you may say, well, can you can I factor out a negative one? Yeah, you can factor out a negative one from the numerator because because you you think, well, I don't I don't like this negative in front. But just leave it like this. If you factor out a negative one, just be careful. You would have to say negative one times three x plus eleven, right? Divide by twenty four. But that that would be the one I would keep. I would keep this one. Okay. All right. So that's number one. So notice what you had to do with something like number one. All right. Not that bad. Just knowing just knowing all of this previous knowledge does help okay it does help so make sure you you have mastered all of these topics from previous lessons okay let's look at number two so in number two we have we have this and we're going to start with a simple one so so number two this situation we have um, we have eight divided by y plus six divided by seven y so now we have, um, now, now let me go back. So number one, notice that, that my, my denominators were monomials, so 12 and 8. In fact, they were, they were whole numbers. Um, but we can still talk about this in terms of a monomial factor here. So the same thing here. So notice that in my denominator, all we have are, are polynomials that's just one term, so y and 7y. So, so in previous lessons, when, when, you, when you found the least common multiple or the least common denominator of that situation, notice that that this one's easy in the fact that that whatever whatever factor you see, you it has to be in the LCD. So I see a Y, I have to use it. And the question is how many did you need? Well I only see one factor Y here. I only see one factor Y here because that's seven to I mean I'm sorry, Y to the first power. So that's all I need. Now your coefficient, this is a one, this is a seven the least common denominator of 1 and 7, or the least common multiple of 1 and 7, is 7. So there's your least common denominator. So your least common denominator is 7y. So, so now what you're going to do is go off to the side, and you're, going to, and you're going to write your equivalent fractions. So in this case, equivalent rational expressions. All right, so, so that's a process. So that's the next thing you're going to do. So once, once you find your, your least common denominator, you go and you write your, your equivalent rational expressions. And really, the only one you need to look at is 8 divided by y, because this already has the LCD. So, so every rational expression is equivalent to itself. Okay, So I have 8y, and I know I'm going to have to multiply that by some rational expression to get an equivalent, to get an equivalent rational expression with 7y as the denominator. And so y times 7 is 7y, right? But what I do to the to the denominator, I have to do the numerator, so 8 times 7, and so 8 times times 7 is 56. Alright, and so so um, I get I get 56 um, right here, so that's gonna be uh, 56, right? So that's 56, so that becomes 56 divided by 7y plus 6 divided by 7y. Okay. All right. So, so notice I didn't have to do anything with this one because it already had the denominator seven y. So now, now there's nothing else to do like I like I had to do in the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, the numerators, I had to do some things to it, right? 
So in here, there's not much to do to this numerator because that's just a monomial factor. So that, that's just one term. So 56 plus 6, I just figured out what that is. So now I can write this as, as one, uh, one rational expression. So I could go from here to one rational expression. And so 56 plus 6 is 62. All right, and so, and so that would be your, your answer. You just, now, in the end, let me tell you this, you're going to see this at some point in, in, in a few of the problems. In the end, though, you got to make sure that you reduce this if possible. So just look at 62. So 62 divided by 7, divisible by 7, just take your calculator, because if it is, you want, you want to simplify this. So 62 divided by 7 gives us um, a, uh, so it'll be 8 with some remainder. All right, so, so we're done. So 62 does, is not divisible by 7. All right, so that's number 2. That's all you had to do. All right, let's go to number 3. Number 3, we have this situation. We have 4 divided by x squared minus 3 divided by x to the fifth. All right, so, so based on our previous knowledge, what's the least common denominator? So notice I, can't, I cannot subtract those those two rational expressions yet because the denominator is not the same. This is x squared. This is x to the fifth. So I got to I got to I got to find equivalent rational expressions in in which the denominator is and and what's the LCD? So the LCD would be so all I see in terms of unique factors is is just x. So so the question is how many factors of x do I need? Well, remember you only have two here. You have five here, so you need to make sure you have five of them. Okay, so that's your LCD. And so now we're going to write equivalent fractions. And so again, just go off to the side and, and, and do that. So I have 4 divided by x. I know I'm going to have to multiply this by some rational expression that's equal to 1 to get, to get an equivalent rational expression that has x to the fifth as um, my denominator. So this is supposed to be x squared. So the question is x squared times what is x to the fifth? Well, x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. Because remember, when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. But what I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So that's x cubed here. And so therefore, I get 4x cubed. So 4 divided by x squared is equivalent to 4x cubed divided by x to the fifth. So that's going to be 4x cubed divided by x to the fifth. Now, remember, you're subtracting. Now we're going to do the next one. So 3 divided by x to the fifth times, now I, I want to go ahead and do that just to talk about something, times, times some rational expression is going to equal to, to a denominator x to the fifth. Well, notice that, that, that 3, that, I'm sorry, x to the fifth times 1 is x to the fifth, and then 3 times 1 is, is 3, right? So what I've noticed is, and we mentioned this earlier, so what we notice is that, that every rational expression is equivalent to itself. Because you can always multiply a rational expression by 1 and, and you get itself. All right, so, so, um, so every rational expression is equivalent to itself. So all I need to do here is just write 3 divided by x to the fifth. And now I can write this as 1, write this as 1 rational expression. So one rational expression. So, so then I get x to the fifth. And in the numerator, all I see is 4x cubed minus 3. Now at that point, at that point, it's important that you see if you can factor this because you, you want to simplify this if possible. So can I factor the numerator? Well, the GCF is 1. Uh, this is not the difference of 2 cubed, so I'm good. So I'm done with this. All right, so, so um, that will be your your uh, final answer. All right, number four. Now, before we get number four, let me remind you what we're doing. So, so notice I'm, I'm, I'm adding or subtracting two rational expressions with different denominators. So first thing you do is find the LCD, okay? And then you're going to write equivalent fractions. Then you're going to, you're going to, um, once you write equivalent fractions, then you're going to, you're going to combine those, since they have the same denominator now, you're going to combine those into one rational expression, and then simplify if you can, okay? All right, so number four. And number four, we have, we have this, and number four, we have six divided by seven x squared y plus 
3 divided by 2xy to the fourth. All right, so, so again, I have monomial factors. I have monomial factors, so that, that's a little bit easier to deal with. So I got to find the LCD. So the LCD here will be, uh, so the, the least common multiple of 7 and 2 is 14. Now let's look at the variable x. So I have two factors of x here. I only have one factor of x here, so I need two of them. I have one factor y here, four here, so I need four of them. So that's your LCD. So I'm going to go off to the side. I'm going to figure out what, what fraction is equivalent to this. So I've got to multiply that to find that equivalent fraction with a denominator that's, that's the LCD. I have to multiply this denominator by some, by some factor to get this. So 7 times 2 is 14, right? And then x squared, I already have the x squared. I have one factor y, I need four of them, so I need to multiply by y cubed. And always check, 7 times 2 is 14, x squared, uh, there's no x squared here, so that's x squared, and then y times y cubed is y to the fourth. But what I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. And so then I get 6 times 2y cubed, which is 12y cubed. All right, so, so this, this rational expression is equivalent to this, and so now that goes here. So that's going to equal 12y cubed divided by 14x squared y to the fourth. And then adding, and now we do the same thing with this one. All right, so I go off to the side, and I do that work. Always do the work to the side. Don't do that here, because it does get messy if you kind of put all of this in this little area. So do that here. So I get, so I have 3 divided by 2xy to the fourth. And so I need to multiply that by some rational expression that's equivalent to 1. And so I need to find out this rational expression is equivalent to... What rational expression with a denominator of 14x squared y to the 4th, the LCD? So 2 times 7 will be 14. x times x is x squared, and then I already have y to the 4th right here. So all you need is just to multiply this by 7x, and then i got to do the same thing with the numerator, because I need this to be a 1. So the only way you can get that to be a fraction that's a 1 is when the numerator and the denominator are the same. So 3 times 7x is 21x, and then that, that, that goes here. So 21x divided by 14x squared, y to the fourth. And now once you get that point, the next step, the next step is to, is to write this as one rational expression. So then, so then I'm going to get a denominator of 14x squared, y to the fourth. And then all I do is add these two together. So I get 12y cubed plus 21x. And then see if you can simplify this. So can I simplify the numerator? Well, they, they have a 3 as a GCF, right? But is that going to help you at all? So is factoring out a 3 going to help you to reduce? No. So you can leave it like this. All right? You can leave it like this. That's the way I would leave it. <clears throat> or you could go ahead and factor out a 3 because 3 um, will go to 12 and 21 evenly. So I get 4 y cubed plus 7x divided by 14x squared y to the fourth. So in the end, though, you will need to, if possible, you will need to, um, to simplify this from previous lessons. And when, remember, when you simplified a rational expression, you had a factor. And so, and so but factoring here, factoring out of 3 didn't help because nothing divides out. And so you could have left your answer like this or you could have left it like this, does not matter, okay? So either, either one would be the answer, okay, either one. All right, but if, if, if you can simplify and it does reduce, then you got to go further. you got to use all your knowledge from, from a previous lesson. And one of those, remember one of those was also, was also, one of those is also simplifying rational expressions. So that was the first one of the first things you did in this in these topics. All right. Now, let's let's look at number five. So number five, we have we have this situation. Okay, we have six. divided by um, y plus 4 
plus 3 divided by y minus 3. All right, so now I no longer am dealing with monomial um, factors as my denominators. So th those are polynomials with more than one term. So, so just got to find the LCD. Now, remember, to find the LCD, you got to remember what we did to find the LCD. In this case, we had to first of all see if I could factor the denominators. All right, so I cannot factor the denominators. So, so, so that's going to stay y plus 4, y minus 3. So now the LCD is easy to deal with. So remember, your LCD must include every factor you see, every unique factor you see. So I see a y plus 4, so I have to use it. Question is, how many do I need? I only have one here, zero here, so that's all I need. The next unique factor I see is y minus 3, so I have to use it. And so how many do I need? I have one here, zero here, so that's all I need. So there's your LCD, okay? Now, the next thing you did was you wrote equivalent fractions. So let's write equivalent fractions. So 6 divided by y to the uh, divided by y plus 4 times sum times sum uh, expression that's equal to 1 will give me a, a denominator that's that's the LCD. So y plus 4 times y minus 3. So I want to find out this this rational expression is equivalent to this one. So I've got to find that numerator. So so what's missing here? So y plus 4, so what factor is missing? I have the y plus 4, so what's missing? y minus 3. So I put y minus 3 here. What I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. And so notice this becomes 6 times. Now since this is a, a polynomial with more than one term, write it like this. All right, with parentheses. All right, now that's going to go here. That's, that's the next thing I would do. I would rewrite it here. So 6 times y minus 3 divided by y plus 4 times y minus 3, okay? Plus, now we do the same thing with this one. So you go off to the side and you figure out what, what's, what fraction is equivalent to this with that denominator. So 3 divided by y minus 3 times some rational expression, right, will equal, and then I want a denominator that's the LCD, y plus 4, y minus 3. Okay, so, so what what do I need to multiply this y minus 3 by to get this denominator? Well, well, I already have the y minus 3, right? So what do I need? The y plus 4. So I need to multiply both numerator and denominator by y plus 4. So now this becomes 3 times y plus 4. And so now I've found an equivalent rational expression for this one. So this, this rational expression is equivalent to this one with that denominator. And you can always check you know they're equivalent. You know that those two, let's go to this one. You know that those two, those two rational expressions are equivalent because if you look at the, if you simplify this, you would, you would get this back, all right? 6 divided by y plus 4. All right, so this is going to be y plus 4 times y minus 3, all right? Now, the next thing I would do, now remember in a previous topic, in one of these topics that we talked about, uh, when we when we talked about writing equivalent rational expressions, we mentioned this. We, we said we said always leave the denominator factored. Remember that? Always leave the denominator factored. It's the numerators you want to go ahead and get rid of the parentheses at this point. And so and so if if you if you um, distribute, you would get six y minus eighteen divided by leave the denominators factored. That's important. Uh, so I get this. Oops, now I can write, well, okay, let me do this. Plus, plus, and then do the same thing here. Plus, and then, and then 3y plus 12 divided by y plus 4, y minus 3. So the reason you want to leave the denominators factors is because at the end, at the end, remember at the end, when we talked about this one here, we said we need, we need to simplify this rational expression. Well, remember to simplify a rational expression, you have to factor the numerator and the denominator. So you got to make sure your denominator is factored. Well, it's already factored, right? It's the numerator when I, at the end when I add those to see if I can factor the numerator at the end. All right. So so you got to you got to first of all get rid of the parentheses so you can combine like terms. So because now you want to you want to add those two fractions into one, rewrite those two fractions into one because now they have the same denominator. And so now I get 6y minus 18 plus 3y plus 12. 
Now, since I'm adding, I don't need to put that in parentheses. It's only when, if this was a subtraction here, if that was a subtraction, you'd need to put that in parentheses so, so you, don't, you don't mess up the signs here. Okay, and so we're almost done with this problem. So now we just need to combine like terms. So 6y plus 3y is 9y. A negative 18 and a positive 12 is a negative 6. All right, and so, and so then, and so then, that's divided by my denominator. So always make sure in every step, every step, make sure your statements are mathematically correct. You got to have a denominator. Some students they they leave the denominator off because they don't feel like writing this stuff. Well, it's important. You must write the denominator. All right. So you got to keep all those rational expressions equivalent. So your mathematical statements are important. You are also graded on mathematical statements and not just not just the final answer. Okay? Okay, so if 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 you look at the remember at this the once once you have this this uh, rational expression, the next step is to simplify it if you can. Well if you notice I can factor out a three, but that's not gonna help, right? So that's not going to help. So, so I can leave it as this. So I get 3 times 3y minus 2 divided by y plus 4 times y minus 3, and nothing reduces. So you can leave it like this, or you can leave it like this. So some students, they, they realize, well, if I factor out a 3, it's not going to help, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And that's fine. All right? But, but you do need to make sure that, that you're, you're, you're factoring in your mind to see if you can go any further. And if you can, you do it. All right? Okay, so that's number five. Let's look at number six. So in number six, we have this. We have 6x divided by x squared minus 9 plus x divided by x minus 3. All right, so the first thing you have to do when finding the LCD, remember, is to factor your denominators. So if you look at this one right here, that, that's the difference of two squares. So I get x minus 3 times x plus 3, okay? And so, therefore, the LCD must include every unique factor I see in, in every denominator. So I see an x minus 3. That's in my LCD. question is how many do I need? I have one here, one here. That's all I need. The next factor I see is x plus 3. I have to use it. How many do I need? I have one here. I don't have any factors of x plus 3 here, so that's all I need. And then over here, I have an x minus 3, which I already have. So there's your LCD. All right, so your LCD is, is this product right here. And so now I'm going to write equivalent fractions. Now what I want you to notice is this. See, this, this, and, and I'm going to go ahead and write it as, as this. 6x divided by x minus 3 times x plus 3. Notice that I don't have to do any work here in terms of the in terms of equivalent fractions because because this rational expression already has the LCD. So every rational expression is equivalent to itself. So I'm going to leave that here. Okay? I'm going to go here though and figure what I need to do with this to get a denominator that's this. So let's write equivalent fractions. So x divided by x minus 3 times some rational expression will equal and then I want my denominator to be this. So I'm going to have x minus 3 times x plus 3. Okay? And so x minus 3, so, I get, so that means then i got to multiply this by x plus 3 to get this denominator. But what I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So this becomes x times x plus 3. Notice the parentheses I put. So that's going to go here. So x times x plus 3 divided by, and then x minus 3, times x plus 3. Okay, so that's now this. So, so these two rational expressions are equivalent. And you know they're equivalent because if, if you reduce, see the x plus 3s? So if you reduce those, you get x divided by x minus 3, which is what this is. Okay, now at that point, what I would do is now get rid of the parentheses here. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, get 6x divided by x minus 3, times x plus 3, plus, and then distribute, I get, I get x squared plus 3x divided by x minus 3 times x plus 3, right? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and, and write this as one rational expression. That's your next step. Write this as one rational expression. So, I get, I get 6x plus x squared plus 3x divided by 
this denominator, x minus 3 times x plus 3. Combining like terms, I get x squared plus 9x, right? x squared plus 9x divided by x minus 3 times x plus 3, okay? Now, notice the next thing you want to do is simplify this if you can. So, notice my numerator, and remember to simplify, you got to factor your numerators and the denominators. And so, my denominators are already factored, so that's why we kept saying in previous lessons, leave the denominators in factored form. All right, so, so here, <clears throat> yeah, I can factor out an x, but that's not going to help. Because, because when you factor out an x, you get x times x plus 9, divided by x minus 3, times x plus 3, and you cannot reduce. So either one's fine. Either one of those is fine. Okay? All right, so that was number 6. Number 7, let's suppose we have this in number 7. Okay, so let's suppose we had um, w divided by w divided by w minus 6 times w plus 2, and I'm subtracting 3 divided by w minus 6. All right, so notice that it's already been factored for you, so, so that won't be that bad. You can easily uh, determine the LCD right away. So I know I'm going to need a w minus 6 and just one of those, and I know I'm going to need a w, minus, w plus 2 as a factor. I have 1 here, 0 here, so that's all I need. So now I'm going to write equivalent fractions with that denominator. So in other words, this already has that LCD. So every rational expression is equivalent to itself. So I'm just going to rewrite it. W divided by W minus 6 times W plus 2 minus. Now let's go ahead and figure out what, what this needs to be. So 3 divided by W minus 6. I know I need to multiply this by some rational expression. That's equivalent to 1 to get an equivalent rational expression with this denominator. So I have this, I want this though. So w minus 6 times w plus 2. So I have I have the denominator w, w minus 6. I also need to multiply it by w plus 2, right? But what I do into the denominator, I do to the numerator. And notice that this is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And so now this, this rational expression is equivalent to this with a numerator of 3 times w plus 2. And so that's going to go here. So 3 times w plus 2 divided by w minus 6 times w plus 2. Okay? All right, so now remember the subtraction. You've got to be careful with subtraction. Okay, now the next thing I would do is, is now that's just some monomial here, so I'm just going to rewrite it just like this. Subtract, and then the numerator here, distribute. Get rid of the parentheses in the numerator. Leave the denominators in factored form. Always leave the denominators in factored form. So it becomes 3w plus 6, right? Divided by w minus 6, w plus 2. Now I can write this as one rational expression. So now I can write this as, as uh, one rational expression with, with this denominator, with the LCD. So this becomes 3w minus, and then in parentheses, in parentheses, this right here, because that's more than one term. So 3w plus 6. And now get rid of the parentheses. So distribute the negative through there, I get w minus 3w minus 6 divided by w minus 6 times w plus 2, okay? Combining like terms, now I get, I get um, negative 2w minus 6, right? Divided by w minus 6, w plus 2. And then now let's simplify this. So to simplify this, it looks like I can factor out a negative 2, correct? And when I factor out negative 2, I get negative 2 times w plus 3. But again, that didn't help me because I can't reduce. So, so um, you can leave your answer either like this or like this. does not matter. Okay? So sometimes if it's a multiple choice question, they may have this as the answer. So just know that, that this, these two are the same thing. Okay, that was number 7. Okay, let's look at number eight. So number eight, I want to I want to do two more problems because we're we're getting near near uh, forty minutes here. So we're going to do some other problems in part two. There are lots of different types of problems here that you need to be aware of how to deal with them. So so I need I need to break this lesson into two parts. So that's why that's why I called this one 
part one. Um, so we're going to look at a part two where, I can, where you can see some other types of problems. But what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and, and look at, at this, this problem. So this is going to be, and I may need another page here. Now it can be, it can be that sometimes this thing will take, take the whole page depending on, on what your rational expressions look like. So number eight, number eight, we have, we have t plus three divided by, so t plus three divided by t plus five, subtract t minus six divided by t plus two, okay? And so, so now we gotta find the least common denominator, so we gotta make sure that your denominators are factored and I can't do anything else to this. So it's easy to see that the least common denominator here would be t plus five times t plus two. Okay, so now I'm gonna write equivalent fractions. So I, so I gotta, in my mind, think about well, t plus 3 divided by t plus 5 times what rational expression will equal an equivalent rational expression with this denominator? That's the question, okay? And so t plus 5, what's missing is t plus 2, so I'm going to multiply that by t plus 2 and the numerator also by t plus 2. Now this becomes t plus 3 times t plus 2 in parentheses, just like this, okay? All right, so that that's going to go here. So t plus 3 divided by t plus 5 is equivalent to this. t plus 3 times t plus 2 divided by t plus 5 times t plus 2. Then I'm going to subtract and do the same thing here. So in my mind, I know that t minus 6 divided by t plus 2 times, and you've got to multiply this by some rational expression. That's going to give me an equivalent rational expression with this denominator t plus 5 times t plus 2. And so I know I need to multiply t plus 2 by t plus 5, right? And what I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator, t plus 5. And so this numerator then becomes t minus 6 times t plus 5. And so that's going to be this. So t minus 6 times t plus 5. Okay? Okay. And so, so now what I need to do next is get rid of these parentheses in the numerator. Leave the denominators factored. Get rid of the parentheses because at some point you'll be adding these two. So you've got to have these listed as terms and not factors. So, so I get, when I follow the numerator, I'm going to get t squared. The outer and the inner give me 5t. The last is going to be 6. So 3 times 2 is 6 divided by the denominator in factored form. Leave it in factored form. Over here, that's going to be t squared. The outer and the inner, it's a negative 6t and a positive 5t is a negative t. And negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Divide by the denominator. Okay. Now I'm going to write this as, now, now once, once I have these listed as, as terms, instead of factors, the numerators I'm talking about, then we write this as one rational expression. So I get, I get a denominator, that's t plus 5 t plus 2, and the numerator, I'm going to get t squared minus 5t plus 6, subtract, be careful with subtraction, all of these terms, t squared minus t minus 30, okay? Now let's get rid of the parentheses, so distribute the negative, so this becomes t squared minus 5t plus 6 minus t squared, uh, neg the opposite, think of this as the opposite, the opposite, or if you want to distribute the negative one, you can. The opposite of a negative t is a positive t, and the opposite of a negative 30 is a positive 30. Now, what again, what I told you, some students have become, I don't know if it's being lazy or they just forget, but remember, you can't just say this. You got to say, you gotta, you gotta, you're saying this is equal to this with, with a denominator. So don't, don't forget about the denominator. You're going to lose points if, you, if your statements are not mathematically correct. So, so you got to say, even though it's, it's tedious work, tedious work to keep listing a denominator, you still have to do it. So you, your statements must be mathematically correct. All right, and then combine like terms, the t squares become zero and add them up. A negative 5t and a positive t is a negative 4t. 6 and 30 is 36, divided by, and then that's going to be t plus 5, t plus 2. Now again, at this point, that's where you want to factor the numerator to see if you can reduce. See, the denominator is already factored. You just got to factor the numerator and see if you can reduce further. 
And you may say, well, I can factor out a negative 4. Yep, you can, but it's not going to help because negative 4 times t minus 9 is what you would get when you factor out a negative 4, and, but there's no common factor in the denominator. So, so if you wanted to leave your answer like this, you can. It does not matter. Okay? All right, now there's one more I want to do, um, and then we'll do some more in part two. So here's number nine. And, and number nine, you're going to see something like that. There's a problem like that in one of your My Math Lab or one of your uh, worksheets. So let's just, let's just look at that one just for a moment. So I have W minus 8 divided by W squared minus 3W plus 2. And I'm subtracting W minus 11 divided by W squared minus 4W plus 3. Okay? All right. So, again, what's the first thing I need to do? So, first of all, notice that the denominators are different. Okay? And I want to I subtract these two rational expressions. So, at some point, at some point, I've got to make sure I can write it as one rational expression. So remember, the first thing you got to do is, is to factor the denominators because you got to find the LCD. So to find the LCD, notice your denominators are, are polynomials with more than one term, so let's factor. Because your LCD is going to be a product of factors. And so when I factor this, it looks like I am going to get, uh, let's see, W, W, 2, 1, last sign is positive, so all these are negative. Okay, so that, that's going to work there. Over here, that's going to be ww, same thing, and then one's going to be three, one's going to be one, okay? And so that's going to give me that. So it looks like the LCD is, remember, your LCD must include every unique factor you see. So I see a w minus two, I have to use it. Question is how many do I need? I have one here, I don't have any here, so I just need one. Here, next one is w minus one. I have one factor here, one factor here, that's all I need. Don't put two, because that becomes common now, and then it'll make things a lot more difficult for you. Always use the least when you're dealing with adding, subtracting, rational expressions. The next one is W minus three. I don't have it, so I need it, and I just need one of them. Uh, and then and the next one is W minus one, which I already have. So your LCD has three factors in it. You see that? Three factors. Okay. So now, now what we're going to do is, is I'm, first of all, I'm going to rewrite this rational expression with these denominators. All right, so in other words, I'm going to say, instead of using a polynomial, I'm going to put this in factored form. So I get w minus 8 divided by w minus 2 times w minus 1, subtract, and then w minus 11 divided by w minus 3 times w minus 1. Okay, so I know that, that in every problem we've done before, I've been going off to the side and finding those rational expressions. But here's what some students do, and, and, then, and then it's up to you. Um, at this point, they'll ask themselves, okay, so I want to write an equivalent rational expression. So they'll put, they'll put in, in this denominator, they'll put the LCD, because you do want that LCD, right? So, so this, this right here would be kind of what you would put on the side. So, so I, have, I have, oh, and, and I'm sorry, I forgot to put, um, that, that's a parentheses here, and then your LCD, the next one's W minus 3. All right, so, so you're writing two, two rational expressions with that denominator because you want to find out this is equivalent to what and this is equivalent to this with, with those LCDs. So W minus 2, W minus 1, times W minus 3. All right, so here's what they would do. And I'm going to put this in red. So they look at this and they ask themselves, all right, so, so this is what I have, this is what I need to get to. So, so I already have the W minus 2. I already have the W minus 1, I'm missing the W minus 3. So then they'll go back here and they'll say, all right, so that means, that means I got to multiply the denominator by W minus 3, just like that. But what I do to the new denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So if you could put that in parentheses, though, if you're going to do it this way, all right? And basically, that's just this part you did here. That's just this, all right? And so now this becomes, this becomes, you put that here. So that becomes W minus 8 times W minus 3. All right, and then over here, same thing. So you would have you would have times. All right, so I have these two factors. I'm missing which one am I missing? The w minus two. So I got to multiply this by w minus two. But what I do to the to the um, denominator, I have to do to the numerator. All right, and so now this is just this numerator. 
w minus 11 times w minus 2. Okay, and so now let's go ahead and, and remember, before we can write this as 1, let's go ahead and get rid of the parentheses in the numerator. Leave, leave the denominators in factor form. Always leave the denominators in factor form because in the end, in the end, when you get to this, this rational expression, you want to simplify if you can. And to simplify, you got to factor. So that's why it's important to leave it already in factored form in the denominator. The numerator, though, you got to get rid of the parentheses because you're, you're, you're combining two um, sets of polynomials. So you got to look at the terms. So in, in the numerator, when I follow this, that was an 8. So when I follow this, that's going to be w squared, a negative 8w and a negative 3w is a negative 11w, and then negative 8 times a negative 3 is a positive 24 over the LCD, okay? And then over here, I have, when I follow this, it becomes w squared, a negative 11w, and a negative 2w is a negative 13w, okay? And then a negative 11 times a negative 2 is a positive 22 over the LCD. Okay, now I can write this as one rational expression. So remember, the reason why we had to multiply the numerators is because now I'm going to have to combine like terms in the numerators. And, and so these polynomials, when I combine like terms, i got to be looking at terms and not factors. Okay, so I'm going to write this as one rational expression with that denominator, just like this. And so I get this, this polynomial, w squared minus 11w plus 24, subtract, remember it's subtraction, be careful, put that in parentheses, subtract this polynomial, w squared minus 13w plus 22. And now let's get rid, get rid of the parentheses, I'm going to distribute the negative 1 through here, and so I get w squared minus 11w plus 24 minus w squared the opposite of a negative 13w is a positive 13w, and the opposite of a positive 22 is a negative 22. All divided by, now remember, don't, don't leave just this as it is, because then your statement is not mathematically correct. This is not the same thing as this, okay? That is the same thing as the numerator divided by the denominator, so you need to rewrite, the, you need to write that denominator. Make sure that all your statements are mathematically correct. And now combining like terms, w squared um, added to be 0, I have a negative 11w and a 13w is 2w. 24 and a negative 22 is a negative, is a positive 2, excuse me, positive 2, right? Okay, positive 2. And so, and so um, I get, I get divided by w minus 2, w minus 1, w minus 3. I was pausing there because I was hoping that something would reduce, and, and it didn't. Because if I factor out a 2, I get 2 times w plus 1. I was hoping that w that something would reduce at this point. Sometimes it will, so you, that's why you need to go further in terms of simplifying this rational expression. And then I can't reduce. Um, the, the w, there's, there's no common factor here. And so, and so this is your answer, either this or this. Okay, either one of those. So, so just notice the process we went through. All right. So notice at that point we had to write equivalent fractions, and then you go and you go from there. All right. So that that's going to be part one. So part one is well, remember part one. That's where we were. We were um, adding and subtracting rational expressions with different denominators. Now this is called part one because I need to do a few more different kinds of problems. And then the next part also, I'll do some more similar to those. Just to, just to, the, the more, the more you practice with these, the better you get. All right, so it's, it's a very tedious process. Lots of, lots of different prior knowledge you need. So all of these are needed to be successful with this. All right, so that's the end of, of this lesson.